There was a young man called Tatishi. He was good at martial art. He was also a descendant of a samurai. Sadly, samurai was not popular anymore in the modern Japan. Modern Japanese people saw samurai as a merely cultural symbol. Currently, Tatishi was working at a theater. That theater displayed a drama about a samurai who was taking revenge on his enemies. At that theater, Tatishi was working as a sound designer. He was happy with his job. One of Tatishi's colleagues named Dino thought that Tatishi's work was not really good. He thought that the soundtracks that Tatishi produced was too fast. His other colleagues understood why Tatishi was like that. They knew that Tatishi was still traumatized by a fatal incident that happened in his previous workplace. Not long ago, Tatishi had worked as a figurant in an action film in the USA. While he was playing a fight scene in that film, a fatal incident suddenly happened. A person died because of that incident. Everybody considered that incident as an accident and not Tatishi's fault. So, they let Tatishi go. Tatishi finally returned to Japan. In the evening, Tatishi's colleagues were holding a farewell party for one of their colleagues named Miura at a small karaoke bar. It was the only karaoke bar in that village. In spite of that, that karaoke bar had full facilities. Tatishi's colleagues were also accompanied by some beautiful women who were working in that place. There were also some gangsters who were spending their time in that place. One of them was a man called Juki. He was putting a tool inside of his nose. That tool was called the Pure Japanese. It was a really fun and popular tool in Japan. Its function was to find out about how Japanese a person was. Juki was glad when his results stated that he was 50% Japanese. There was also the leader of the gang in that place. He was called g but let's just call him Jund. He was drinking with his members. Miura planned to move to the capital city. In that farewell party, he said goodbye and bowed to his colleagues. Juki suddenly approached Miura and his colleagues. He gave several packs of the pure Japanese to them and told them to try those tools. Miura and his colleagues tried them right away. Only Tatishi who was not interested in the pure Japanese. He refused to try something just because it was popular. Juki was offended by Tatishi. He tried to force Tatishi into trying the pure Japanese. Juki and Tatishi finally got into a fight. Junju saw that stopped their fight immediately to apologize to Tatishi and his colleagues for his members' behavior. He treated them to some drinks. Tatishi who had been annoyed by Juki decided to leave that place. When Tatishi arrived at home, he performed a samurai ritual. He was taking care of his sword. The next day, an old man named Wagamon and his granddaughter named Ayu were having a conversation in their house. Ayu was a high school student, even though she was still an underage student. She was working part-time as an escort at the karaoke bar where Jun and his gang hanged out last night. Apparently, Jun and his gang asked Ayu to persuade his grandfather to sell his inherited land to them. Ayu asked his grandfather why he refused to sell that inherited land. She tried to persuade his grandfather by saying that she was going to need a lot of money because she was going to study at a university. But Wagamon still refused to sell his land. He thought that people who were interested in buying his land were corrupt and greedy people. Because of that, he refused to sell his land to them. At the same time, Jun was doing a warm-up in his house. From the sound of his punches, anyone could tell that Jun was really good at fighting. After that, Jun discussed about their hot spring bath construction project with his gang. His gang said that they had found a Chinese investor for their business. But unfortunately, they had one problem. The land where they were going to build the hot spring bath was not sold yet to them. That land was the inherited land that was owned by Wagamon. Jun was upset because of that. He took his anger out on one of his members. He was determined to get that land no matter what. At the theater, Tatishi was playing a role as a samurai. There were spectators who came and watched their play. In the middle of the fighting scene, when Tatishi's face was touched by the lamplight, Tatishi suddenly remembered the traumatic accident that he experienced in the USA. He couldn't focus on his work because of that. Juki came to the karaoke bar to intimidate Ayu. He grabbed Ayu's hair and physically harassed her. But Tatishi suddenly came to that place and stopped Juki. He didn't like what Juki did to Ayu. Juki was mad because Tatishi stopped him. So, he beat up Tatishi relentlessly. Tatishi didn't do anything when Tatishi was beating him up. He decided not to fight him back. He just wanted Juki to leave that place immediately because he was worrying about Ayu. The next day, Juki and his gang visited Weijiman's place. They came there to intimidate Wagamon by littering his lawn with trash. They would stop intimidating Wagamon if that old man agreed to sell his inherited land to them. After that, Wagamon went to a temple to pray for guidance and direction. While he was visiting that temple, he saw Tatishi practicing a martial art. At the village hall, Mr. Kurosaki was trying to convince the villagers about the importance of the hot spring bath in their village. He said that the hot spring bath that was going to be built could introduce their village to the international world. Apparently, some villagers opposed the construction of that hot spring bath. They expressed their disapproval by creating and displaying protest posters on Weijima's land. 
Tatishi was officially working as an actor at the theater now. He was appointed by the theater manager as an actor to replace Miura. Even though Tatishi was sometimes clumsy and making mistakes, the theater manager believed in Tatishi because Tatishi always showed perseverance when he was working there. After that, Tatishi did his first rehearsal as an actor with other actors in that theater. His daily practice at the temple made him good in using sword. At the karaoke bar, Ayu thanked Tatishi for helping her yesterday. To express her gratitude, Ayu gave the popular pure Japanese to Tatishi. As soon as Tatishi returned home, he finally tried the Japanese pure that Ayu gave him. His results stated that he was 100% Japanese. It was a very rare result in Japan. Even a gangster like Juki only got 50% Japanese as his result. At the karaoke bar, Mr. Kurosaki was upset because of the delay of the hot spring bath construction. The construction was delayed because Wagamon still refused to sell his land. Then, Mr. Kurosaki called Ayu who was working at that karaoke bar. He greeted Ayu in a friendly manner. He tried to persuade Ayu to make her grandfather sell his land. Mr. Kurosaki said that the hot spring bath was going to provide their village with many job opportunities. In fact, it was indeed really hard to find a job in that small village. Even a high school student like Ayu had to work part-time as an escort at that karaoke bar. The next day, Ayu and her friend visited the theater where Tatishi was working. That day, Tatishi was going to perform as an actor in that theater for the first time. At first, his play was going well. Tatishi's performance was really great. He moved and swung his sword like a real samurai. But when Tatishi's face was touched by the lamplight, Tatishi suddenly had another flashback. This time, he remembered about his memory when he was a child. Because of that, he lost his focus on his work. His character was supposed to be lost but he defeated Dino instead. Their play was finally stopped because of the technical issue. After that, Dino complained about the play that had to be cancelled because of Tatishi. He told the spectators that Tatishi always ruined the stage because of his trauma. Ayu felt sorry for Tatishi when she heard what Dino said. She wanted to cheer Tatishi up. After that, Ayu came to meet Tatishi to thank him once again for helping her the other day. Then, they walked around that theater together. They went to the game center and played shuriken game there. Shuriken was a special knife that was used by ninja or samurai. Tatishi was really good in using those shurikens. He reminded everyone of Ninja Atori, Naruto, and Rurani Kenshin. Ayu and Tatishi finally parted ways on the bridge. Ayu cheered Tatishi up before she left that theater. She believed that Tatishi was going to perform well tomorrow because Tatishi managed to defeat a person like Juki. But Tatishi said that the hardest part was to hold back. Ayu didn't understand what he meant. The next day, Ayu complained about Juki's gang who kept littering their lawn with trash. Then, Wagamon asked his granddaughter to go to the temple with him. They prayed for guidance and direction there. While they were visiting the temple, they saw Tatishi practicing a martial art. Ayu began to have a crush on Tatishi, but Wagamon had different opinion on him. He thought that Tatishi was a dangerous person because he gave off a dark aura. At night, while Wagamon was attending a meeting at the village hall, he saw Tatishi again there. The theater manager ordered Tatishi to attend that meeting to replace him. In that meeting, Mr. Kurosaki tried to convince the villagers again about the importance of the hot spring bath for their village. He managed to convince many people there except Wagamon who was sick and tired of a person like him. Mr. Kurosaki also asked the villagers to support and choose him as a candidate in the next election. After that, Wagamon asked Tatishi to hang out with him. They went to a room and smoke a cigarette there. Wagamon told Tatishi that Mr. Kusosaki was actually a corrupt person who was only thinking about money, and it was the reason why he refused to sell his land to him and his gang. While he was spending time with Tatishi, he kept drinking alcohol until he got drunk. He couldn't even climb the motorcycle because he got drunk. Suddenly, a bright light touched Tatishi's face. This accident then couldn't be avoided. <laughs> Ayu went to the hospital as soon as she heard that his grandfather was being hospitalized. When she arrived there, she saw Tatishi waiting for his grandfather outside of his room. Tatishi lied about what happened to Wagamon. He told Ayu that Wagamon was being hospitalized because he got food poisoning. He said that Mr. Kurosaki and his gang intentionally poisoned Wajiman's food so they could have Wajiman's land. The next day, Ayu asked Tatishi to go to Mr. Kurosaki's office with her. In that office, Ayu was mad at Mr. Kurosaki because he had poisoned and attempted to kill his grandfather. Mr. Kurosaki tried to stay calm. He smiled and told Ayu and Tatishi to leave his office. He threatened to call the police if they refused to leave that place. Ayu screamed at him and told him that she would never sell his grandfather's land to him. She threatened to take revenge on him if his grandfather died. Suddenly, Tatishi went berserk in that room. The theater received a guest named Pachita that day. While Pachita was taking a tour of that theater and watching the rehearsal of the actors, he believed that he had met Tatishi before, but he couldn't recall where he saw him. Not long after that, two police officers came to that theater. 
They wanted to interrogate Tatishi for what he had done in Mr. Kurosaki's office yesterday. While those police officers were interrogating him, Tatishi lied to them by saying that what he did was only a self-defense. He said that he did that because he was afraid and threatened by Mr. Kurosaki who attacked him first. Pachita finally remembered where he met Tatishi. He told everyone about the fatal incident that happened in the USA. He said that the incident was not really an accident because he believed that Tatishi stabbed his co-actor on purpose. He even saw Tatishi smiling like a psychopath after he did that. Apparently, when Tatishi was a child, he was severely bullied by his peers because his peers thought that he was not a Japanese. Tatishi's peers beat Tatishi up relentlessly and almost blinded his eyes with bright light. While Tatishi was being tortured by them, he accidentally pushed one of his bullies until he fell and passed out. Since then, each time Tatishi saw bright light, he always lost his control and became aggressive. At the theater, the theater manager decided to fire Tatishi from his job because Tatishi had vandalized Mr. Kurosaki's office and lied about the incident that happened in the USA. Tatishi went to Weijiman's funeral to pay his last respect, outside of the mortuary, A was disappointed and angry at Tatishi after she found out that her grandfather died because of brain concussion and not food poisoning like what Tatishi told her. Tatishi was sad because of everything that happened to him, he became even more sad when he saw news on TV, that news revealed that the pure Japanese was only a pseudoscience. After that, Tatishi went back home, he planned to commit the harakiri or ritual suicide that was practiced by the samurai, but apparently, he was still alive after he committed it. Since her grandfather died, Ayu lived alone in her house. June came to her house and forced her to sell her inherited land to him. Juki helped June to intimidate Ayu by vandalizing her house. While Ayu and Juki were fighting, Ayu accidentally stabbed Juki with a knife. Ayu panicked because she had accidentally killed Juki. She ran away to the wood immediately. She arrived at the temple and encountered Tatishi there. She asked Tatishi to help her. Not long after that, June and his gang also arrived at the temple. At first, they nicely asked Tatishi to bring Ayu to them, but June suddenly shot Tatishi on the chest because he didn't want to waste more time. <laughs> Apparently, Tatishi was still alive. The bullet from the gun that was fired by June only shot the shuriken that was inside of his pocket and not his chest. Tatishi finally accepted his faith as a samurai. Then, he went to the location of the hot spring bath construction. There were many gangsters who were guarding that place. Tatishi tried to stop the hot spring bath construction by blowing up that area with several bombs. He also attacked the gangsters by using nine katanas like a real samurai. Jun took a katana that was accidentally left by Tatishi there. He tried the katana on one of his members who had been annoying him because he was talking too much. Tatishi took Ayu to the theater. Jun and his gang went to the theater because they knew that Tatishi was going to go there. Not long after that, Mr. Kurosaki also came to that place. Jun gave him a gun to protect himself. The stage lights were suddenly turned on. Tatishi came from the darkness like a samurai in the past. Like a samurai in old Japanese films, Tatishi was approaching and killing his enemies one by one. He managed to defeat and kill them even though they brought guns with them. Apparently, Jun and his gang refused to attack Tatishi together at the same time because they still obeyed the ethical rule of the gangsters. Because of that, Tatishi managed to kill their two members. Another gangster came and aimed his gun at Tatishi. When he was about to kill Tatishi with his gun, Ayu suddenly came and killed him first. Mr. Kurosaki who saw that suddenly shot Ayu on the chest, Ayu fell instantly. Tatishi was furious because of that. Mr. Kurosaki tried to shoot Tatishi but he kept missing his target because he was afraid. Tatishi attacked him back by hitting him with several kanais. After that, Tatishi finally faced Jun. A fierce battle between a cold-blooded gangster and a lonely, vengeful samurai was going to begin soon. Both Tatishi and Jun were good in using the katanas. Because of that, it was pretty hard for them to defeat each other. They finally got rid of their katanas and fight each other with their own bare hands. Tatishi was having a hard time fighting Jun because he was only an actor in actions plays. On the contrary, Jun managed to beat Tatishi up easily because he was used to beat up people. Tatishi got badly injured because Jun kept beating him up. When Jun was about to kill him with a katana, suddenly this thing happened. In the place where she began to tell me about. Both Tatishi and Jun finally died together. 